You're listening to Healing Voices Project, where we share stories and the latest information from people who fight addiction every day. I'm Mike Torvelt, your host and author of Voices from the Fallen. Thank you for listening, for following, and most of all, for sharing with people you care about. Make your voice count too. everybody, I'm Mike Torville here, host of Healing Voices Project, and today we're doing something a little bit different. We're on site at the Michael J. Diaz Foundation at one of the houses of Michael's house. Um, In particular, today we're at Christian and Brian's house on Mill Street in Springfield, and today we're going to be talking to Sean Martin. And Sean, thanks for being with us. Thank you, it's an honor. Sure, yeah, I'm glad you're here with us, you know. And this is, the, this is unique for us because we're usually in the studio and everything's just much more structured and easy, but we're on site because we thought it was worth showing um, the house here at Michael's house and talk about what they do and the success they've had. And so, Sean, you're going to talk a little bit about your role, um, what brought you here, a little bit about your background, and... Um, uh, so we've got a lot to talk about. So thanks again. All right. All right. Sounds good. Sure. So um, how long have you been here at, at uh, Michael J. Diaz House? I've been here since uh, December of last year. December of 2022? 2022. All right. Yep. Well, and so tell us a little bit about your background, uh, what brought you here, and, and tell us about what you do. There's a lot of questions, but you can start off with All right. <laughs> your background. Well, right. you know, I, uh, I grew up in the town of Hamden. I moved there from where when I was in about uh, fifth grade. Yeah. And uh, it was tough at first, you know. It's kind of like a, a time where kids are transitioning into who they really want to be. They're, per- they're really forming their, like, personalities. And I remember um, it, was, it was tough. They had that wolf pack mentality a little bit, and it wasn't easy coming and being the only new kid in Hamden after – Coming from where? Very different towns. But plus, also, they're small towns. I yeah. Where and yeah. Hamden are pretty yeah. tiny, so they, you don't have a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay. A lot they going definitely on there. are. Yeah. But yeah, I, so I, I moved there um, to Main, Main Street in Hamden, and uh, it, was, it was tough at first. You know, I, I struggled to make friends. I think I kind of was a little disillusioned into believing that everyone was just making fun of just me all the time, when everyone was, you know, I, they call it catch and wreck on, on other people. And um, it made me somewhat depressed at a young age, I'll admit. I, I struggled to find friends at first, but I eventually found, you know, a group of kids that I could hang out with, and, you know, we had a, a good time without drugs or alcohol in middle school, at least. So this is at your early teens? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I got through all middle school without trying even alcohol, you know? Yeah. I didn't have the, uh, the, 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 I didn't know I had the disease of more then, you know? And I, I get into high school and freshman year, I find out that uh, I'm pretty good at running. I, I, st- I try out for the track team yeah. and um, did cross country as well. Did all running sports my first year and I did really well. And uh, I thought that was you know my calling. I, I felt like all of a sudden I really fit in when I got into high school and you know Hamden, part of a team and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Hamden combined with uh, Wilbraham, so I got to meet a whole new group of people who you know didn't know I was the new kid at one point because I was still in my head for you know. Even well into adulthood, like I just I, I that new kids I don't know if they call it new kid syndrome or what, but like it just it stuck to my psychological profile a little bit. Yeah. And um, so I eventually I get to the end of freshman year. It's summertime, I remember, and uh, my buddy Tim gets a bottle of a uh, Smirnoff strawberry vodka, and uh, I remember having a, a pretty spiritual experience with with this alcohol. Honestly, we went to the woods, the sand pits by his house. And uh, we got we got pretty drunk. Don't remember puking or anything yet, um, though I was a lightweight at a young age, that's for sure. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it took me quite some time to uh, to, to keep alcohol down, but um, we ended up playing tennis that day. I was no good at tennis. Those those guys were, were great. I just was, I still remember having a fun time regardless, though, and just felt very. You, you mean know, you played like, tennis after drinking? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we All went right. to the Minichok tennis courts and yeah. played some tennis. And, yeah. you know, it was a good, it was a good time, and I, it was a very fond memory of mine. Uh, I remember quite vividly. Yeah. You know? And uh, from there, high school, I tried smoking weed. I enjoyed that. You know, that kind of um, got in the way of sports a little bit, I'll admit. But what really got in the way of sports, and, uh, you know, this is this was a really rough time for me, was when uh, I discovered the Viking that my mother had. 
Mm. And uh, that led to a really dark path um, starting my junior year of high school. And um, I, I am grateful that I got caught as early as I did because I, I, I gave another kid one and he told somebody else in school and I ended up getting suspended for 10 days. And, yeah, so it was really serious for me. I was worried I was never going to make track captain, cross country captain, all these different things. And I, I remember running off that day and um, I, I tried to take my own life. Wow. Yeah, I tried to take my own life and uh, I thought the world was over. I thought there was nothing I can do. And I, I realized then, though, after everything fell down, the support system I did have, and I was super grateful for it because it, it, it got me away from opiates for that time. I was, I was lucky I didn't discover anything well, <laughs> until much later, worse than that. But. And how, let me ask you how, when, you're, when you get caught and you get your suspension and your world is falling apart, um, your mom, who you took the yeah. Viking from. Yeah, yeah. How was she through all of this? She was devastated. Yeah. She, she had no idea. Um, she had always, I mean, she had like briefly warned me and my sister never to touch it. And of course, I was just a curious kid. And, you know, I don't, I don't even know exactly what I felt like I was missing then. Um, I didn't date a lot in high school. I had a, a few girlfriends, but um, there's like, there's got to be some kind of void that I was trying to fill for why I would go and do that and betray my mother's trust. Well, you were young, you were immature, you didn't know what you didn't know, and yeah. it was just that formative year, so okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that all falls down. I don't make cross country captain. It's, it's, I, I, I figure it out that I still have a shot at making track captain, though. I talked to my you coach. You were a junior. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah so, junior, yeah. yeah. So I talked to my coach about, you know, I, I, trying to turn this thing around, turn this franchise around, as they say. Yeah. And um, I'm going to work as hard as I can to make sure that nothing like this ever happens again. I can, you know, keep trying to break my uh, junior PRs and all that. And uh, he, he made me captain for indoor and outdoor track, my, my coach, Coach Kripp. He's real wow. good. I see him all the time still. He's a, he he's has great confidence guy. in you more yeah. than you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, more, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, that all goes well. You know, I'm doing well my senior year. I'll admit, I feel like I was doing a little bit better my junior year times wise, but um, I start getting recruited for track. Uh, Worcester State tries to recruit me, Westfield State. I really wanted to go to Bryant University, though. Mm -hmm. That was number one on my list. I put in for there, uh, Keene, a few other colleges. I only didn't get into UNH. I ended up getting into Bryant. And um, I remember going there for a tour, and we had to go to the um, financial aid office because even though they were basically offering half uh, of like full tuition, all that mm -hmm. board, um, it was still a lot of money, and my mother wasn't you know too comfortable co-signing for that. It was a real tough day for us, you know, in there yeah. because uh, I realized that I might not be able to, to go to Bryant. And uh, my next choice was Westfield. You know, I every time I, I went there toward the campus, you know, it seemed like a good fit. I ended up being the, the track coach and. Uh, was ready to try out for the team as soon as I, I got there. You ended up being the track coach for... Meeting the track coach. Oh, meeting the yeah, track coach. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, right. Coach O'Brien. Yeah. Gotcha, yeah. yeah. And um, so, yeah, I, I end up, you know, deciding to commit to Westfield yeah. and uh, doing track there. I know it wasn't set in stone then because you still have to try, try out for the team mm -hmm. one way or the other. And um, by this time, I was drinking here and there. There were some parties um, at Minichog. Like with with different kids from all over the place, um, Sabbath, wherever, and um, I wasn't really, you know, I, I I realized I had somewhat of a problem then with weed, especially it was more weed. I was more smoking weed. I, that was the marijuana maintenance program, as they call it a lot. And um, it wasn't until a little later in college that I, I realized that I probably had a real bad problem in drinking. But the first night of college, I <laughs> should have realized it then where. Me and my roommate were out, you know, drinking, smoking weed, whatever, on the, f the first night of campus. And he, end up, he ended up blowing a point three four BAC that night. It was bad. Uh, his name was Earl. I called him Hurricane Earl after that. It was right How did you know? There. I mean, you, you wouldn't know that <laughs> unless you got caught. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. So. And so, yeah, we were, I remember the, one of the last memories I had, it was all very blurry, was trying to do a sobriety test in the, the laundry room of Dickinson Hall at uh -huh. the, the bottom floor there. And um, 
talking to the sergeant of police and saying, it's, it's okay, I'm Irish. And he's like, well, I'm Irish too. You don't see me acting like a fool right now. Okay. <laughs> that type of deal. Yeah. And um, I, I blew like a point two, two, three, two, four myself. So this is night number one. This is night number one of being at Westfield yeah. State. All right. Good yeah. start. <laughs> yeah, good start yeah. for sure. No, I didn't realize I even had a problem then. You know, it was, it was just another, another day. It was puking all over the bathroom floor. It can only get better from there. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I like to think, man. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, that, that happens. I get a 10, 100, which is 10 hours of community service, a hundred dollar fine. And, um, my mother finds out immediately cause I had her in my contact, emergency contact information. I got PC, which means protective custody to my friend Matt for about eight hours that night. So I was sleeping on his floor. It wasn't a good first night at all. Uh, no, you know, no. and, um, Coach must not have been too happy. Oh, no. He got a phone call as well. Yeah. And that it was not a good introduction because me and my roommate were going to be on tryout for the track team, mm -hmm. me and Earl. And, uh, yeah, he gave us a phone call. Uh, I think it was the next day. <laughs> it was not thrilled. So that that all falls down. Um, I, end, I end up still making the track team. and um, But I, I, I still kind of had this sem sense of emptiness still that um, – I thought alcohol and weed were helping with. Um, I don't know. I was still trying to like recreate that glory I had felt in high school track, especially to one degree or another. I, I had this one moment of flashback for a second here. I had this one moment my junior year where we're against Long Meadow, who are our rivals, and the the fate of the whole meet came down to the four by four relay, and I was the anchor leg, and me and this guy Paul got the baton at the same time and it was like neck and neck he was i i had the lead but he was like trying to come up on me the like the whole race i remember everyone flooding the side of the track i just barely edged this guy out i just kept kicking i felt like i could feel no pain in that moment and i i crossed the finish line everyone crowds around me i could barely breathe and all these people are like rushing me and it, that was honestly one of the proudest moments of my life you know mm -hmm. and i i don't know if i was trying to use drugs and alcohol to recreate some of those moments but it's sometimes i i I really felt like that's what it might have been. But despite that, you still felt that felt that emptiness because you couldn't get to that same feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I didn't feel like there's any way I could. And yeah. you know, honestly, doing it in the college, it it didn't really help because I, you know, I was not nearly as good as a lot of these kids, even on my own team. You know, like Westfield won its division, Massac, almost every year. So I, I was already running against really good D three track runners and. I just wasn't focused and driven enough, you know, I, I didn't go to the gym nearly enough then, and um, I'd isolate pretty often. I, I had a good amount of friends, but I didn't have the same connections I had in high school with some of my really good friends like Tim and Seymour, and you know, I, I rarely got to see them. Um, so college was rough. I ended up getting uh, in trouble again, had a little party in the room, and um, you know, the, the campus police came and they gave me another 10-100 and they told me basically because of that, I can either choose to commute the rest of the second semester or commute for um, next semester of sophomore year. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> me thinking I could be clever, I'm like, all right, well, maybe if I finish this year out and then... Uh, first semester of sophomore year, I just tell my mother I want to commute. She'll never know about this because that's just, you know, me trying to be slick. And how did that go? And that, that well, she didn't find out immediately, obviously. Um, <laughs> eventually, you know, I had to tell her it's, yeah. it's all part of the program. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, I ended up commuting my sophomore year. I was extremely depressed. I didn't feel like I was a part of the uh, community anymore, you know. I felt like like an outsider again. Yeah, just like you did years ago. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then when I'd I'd be living at my mother's, I'd go back home. I wasn't seeing too many people that uh, I grew up with. They were all at college for the most part, you know. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people that uh, stuck around with a stick, but I just I just wasn't really socializing as much. You know, I I didn't really have that sense of you were home. Pride. Yeah, I was You're like, yeah. isolated somewhat, yeah. right? And yeah. that's when the, the drinking got worse? Uh, that's when I started taking those pills again. Okay. Too. From your you mom? Know, yeah. You know, they they were around. Um, I, I 
for some reason thought I could not get caught still. I had every justification in the world in my own head. And um, I, I took them on and off again throughout college until, uh, well, my junior year I go back to campus, so I'm not there anymore. It's not, not as prevalent. I don't believe I got in any trouble from my mother my sophomore year. But junior year I end up living up there and uh, living at old apartments. I meet a group of good people. I'm socializing again. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm working at Red Robin. Because um, I've worked in food service most of my life. I didn't really mention yeah. I, I, Friendly's, Red Robin, yeah. Crazy Jake's, a bunch of different So were you able to hold your job, go to school? Were you on the track team again? Oh, yeah. I didn't. I cut that part out. I, I stopped doing track after about one season of indoor. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I don't want to badmouth anyone for any reason, but, you know. But you some found some other activities. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not the healthiest ones, for right. sure. But, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, my junior year, I'm, I'm drinking a lot. By this time, I have enough people around me who can easily get alcohol. Um, that's when it, my drinking started to really pick up. I still didn't really identify as alcoholic then. I always binge drank. I could not hold my liquor for the life of me still, though, at age 20, 21. And, um, what was it you were drinking? Uh, I, <laughs> plenty of vodka. Yeah. Plenty of vodka more than anything. Um, occasionally whiskey. Uh, yeah, mainly vodka and so whiskey. It was, it was the harder stuff. Yeah. It wasn't just beer. Was, yeah. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah. Occasionally beer, shock top <clears throat> was one of my go-tos for sure. All right. But, um, so yeah, junior year ends in a really weird fashion. I'm having trouble, you know, keeping myself focused, uh, mental health problems, and I, I definitely needed to see a shrink more than anything. You know, I ended up going through some, some psych wards at the time, and... Um, I, I just really couldn't find a way to be happy and uh By the way, not to not interrupt you, Sean, but you ended up going to some psych wards with by your own volunteering, uh or was someone my, instrumental in getting you there? Yeah, my mother. Okay. My mother knew something was wrong. Right. Um I wasn't acting like myself. Mm -hmm. And um yeah. So I started going okay. going through that. Yeah. And um that was a rough summer. I mm -hmm. I yeah. The junior year of what was that the summer of twenty thirteen? Yeah. Summer 2013 was rough. I go into my senior year. Um, I'm doing okay then, but by the time it's the second semester, I end up coming home for break, and my mother catches me taking her pills again. And that's when shit really hit the fan. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to co-sign my loans anymore, and um, I really didn't know what to do at that point, you know? So I just went back to college, and I had no way of buying books, so I kind of just... Uh, Lived on campus and didn't go to class that whole semester. I don't know how Westfield let me do that, but it's... It, you just kind of got lost in the crowd, I guess. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I was not leaving my room very often. I was playing... Well, you had no reason to. You weren't no. going to class. You weren't on the track team. No. And so when you hung out, what did you do with yourself? I just played video games all the time. Yeah. I was miserable. I barely talked to my roommates. Um, and uh, life was very empty. It was, it was not a good time then, for sure. And... Uh, I end up uh, leaving Westfield. I got to figure out a, a place to go after I don't graduate, you know. And um, was back home an option? No, no. Going back to my right. mother's is definitely not an option at that yeah. point. So my my buddy uh, Connor, he ends up letting me come to live at his house for a while, and uh, I find a job pretty quick. Unfortunately, this job was at uh, Cappy's Liquor Store. All right. That's when I realized that was how. Well, on the job, you know, I'd be drinking. Um, I'd find any way to, you know, sneak a bottle from the mismatch rack, whatever, and uh, go drinking in the bathroom. And then when I got out, I'd be drinking at Connor's and we smoking weed. And, you know, I, I, I felt a little better about myself because I, I had a steady job. I had friends around me, but, you know, there, it still felt like something was missing any day, any day of the week. You were, you were functioning somewhere. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, okay, you were, yeah. you were getting through day to day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was less miserable than I was that second semester right, of right. senior year, that's for sure. But um, There wasn't much of an opportunity for things to get better given your surroundings, though. Yeah, no. Right. I was still having trouble with my head at yep. the end of the day. Yep. I wasn't on any type of med medication or anything mm -hmm. but um eventually my mother gets wind of what i'm doing and uh sections me 
because, you know, she, she knew something was up. My mother always knows something's up. I ended up going to Bridgewater for, it was around two months. I don't think they have that program anymore for sectioning there, but, um, and I, I felt like it did help a decent amount, but, uh, I get out, I still can't focus, my mind's not right, my emotion's all over the place, and, um, my cousin gets me a job being a, uh, janitor at a church, we they call it a sexton, and, um, I, I couldn't find the motivation to want to do it. I just, uh, I was still battling with myself, that internal battle, deeply. And uh, so I ended up just not showing up one day for that job. I run off again and um, eventually end up going to the uh, Salvation Army. And uh, that was absolutely miserable there. I was at the one in Worcester. Leave there, don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. I'm sitting in a park in the middle of Worcester for almost a week. Eventually, um, I you slept. A, you slept in the park. Yeah, slept yep. in the park. Barely was eating anything. I think I was just filling up uh, a cup of soda from the McDonald's up the road. And um, eventually, I get a, a phone from the, like someone on the street. They're just like giving out cell phones. Whatever. I'm grateful I did because you know I ended up texting my mother, and she ended up asking my cousin to come find me, and um, he did. Luckily, I don't know how many parks there are in Worcester, but he managed to find me <laughs> one way or the other and um brought me home from there i was homeless for a while and then i did one of the most um uh, one of the hardest things one of the worst things i've ever done to my mother and i stole uh, a large sum of money from her mm-hmm. and uh, uh some pills as well that she had in her lockbox when uh she wasn't home and this was uh 2015 yeah this was 2015. what'd you do with the money well, at that time, I hadn't really, I had tried cocaine, never really liked it, so I didn't spend it on that. Luckily, I had not tried heroin yet. Um, I ended up buying a new phone, I bought a bunch of weed, I, just stupid material things, and um, didn't really do anything constructive with the money, that's for sure. Living in hotels, whatever, paid back my old drug dealer. Um, and uh, eventually, you know, she catches wind of it. It was money she was going to use to go on vacation with my sister, you know. And um, she ends up telling the, the hand the police, you know, they, they want to talk to me. Um, eventually, I'm like, run out all that money. It's like December or January, I want to say. Yeah, December or January. And um, I'm at the hand in town hall. That's also the police department drinking uh, Natty Daddy for some reason inside and um i get a brilliant idea to go in one of the cars in the parking lot not even thinking about the fact that <laughs> there's video cameras all around this facility <laughs> one of the cars just a, a random car it was or? it was a truck it was a yeah. truck and um this ended up this truck ended up belonging to uh who was the detective at the time uh, officer trombley yeah. and um I ended up going back inside with a change, and it was it was a lot. And immediately, one of the police comes up from downstairs, and they're like, "We saw you on the camera. Uh, what are you doing, running through this car?" I go down there, and Officer Tromley's sitting there, and he was the one officer in Hamden who always kind of had my back and thought I was a good kid. You know, I I'd gotten trouble with the law here and there in Hamden, Wilbraham, Springfield, but nothing nothing serious up until then, and um, I felt like. I felt horrible about myself at that point. Um, this guy had really gone to bat to, for me, and I betrayed his trust without even realizing I was doing it. So that pretty much uh, sold my ticket to Ludlow at that point. Um, I think I only had like $200 bail. But I was homeless at the time. I, I initially didn't realize I'd be like staying in jail. And um, that took a little bit to sink in, but then. What did you think that you would just visit it, it, your will, or did, of I course thought you're going to stay? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I thought the judge would just be like, "Oh, he can go on his own accord. He's not a record." Right, or something come like and that. go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I was delusional, so delusional then, you know. And um, I get to jail. Um, I end up, you know, mingling with with people in there. I I was. It was a very, you know. Uh, reflective time in my life. I learned a lot about myself being in jail. I uh, I end up like working out almost every day in there. You know, I, I wish I realized even then how much 
you know, a good exercise routine really helps in sobriety. Um, I spend about eight months in Ludlow. I, I'm in staff dieting. I'm doing well down there. Um, and you don't have access to alcohol or drugs, do you? <laughs> Funny thing. I'll, I'll say that um, I did try to make a batch of homebrew at one point, a little bit before July 4th, and uh, they flipped the whole pod. They, like, started running through rooms, and I, I managed to pour it down the toilet in time, but uh, I, I did not drink at all when I was in there. Right. So I, I spent that eight months sober, I'll admit. And um, I get out, you know, I'm trying to find a place to stay. I'm couch surfing here and there, and there's this kid, uh, Nick, who tells me I can stay at a friend of, of his, uh, Alyssa's house. And um, I didn't really know at that point that Nick was like a serious heroin addict. I feel like he had maybe like made jokes about it here and there, but... Um, one night we're hanging out and um he's like yeah you should you should try this shit though man i'm like heroin <laughs> i'm like i don't know man That's... something you had not considered before yeah never considered before yeah. this was uh about 2017 at this point yeah. either beginning of 2017 and so at this point you just said well why the hell not yeah Is that yeah pretty much it yeah i was like is it anything like you know vicodin <laughs> um like like i had been taking when i was younger He's like, oh, it's way better. This concludes part one. Join us next week for the second half of Sean's incredible story.